The Singapore one works. Yeah. 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 I never even thought. <laughs> Committee will come to order. Good morning and thank you for being here. The Washington Metropolitan Transit Authority operates the second largest rail transit system in the country, second only to New York subway system, also runs the fifth largest bus system. For a long time now, it has been a clean, reliable, and safe system but there are indications that the system is deteriorating. On June the 22nd, 2009, a Metro Rail train slammed into another train near Fort Totten Station. Nine people were killed and eight, 80 were injured. It was the worst accident in Metro's history. In January of this year, two maintenance workers were killed as they worked on the tracks. In total, 15 people have lost their lives on the metro rail system over the past year. Something clearly is wrong. Earlier this year, Senator Mikulski asked the Federal Transit Administration to audit and its safety system. The Tri-State Oversight Committee, known as the TOC, the FTA found serious shortcomings in the safety culture. To me, the most surprising thing was this. Even though the TOC was the responsibility to oversee safety on the metro system, the TOC has no full-time staff. It has no inspectors, no auditors. It has no enforcement power. The FTA has no enforcement power over metro either. In other words, the Metro Rail is pretty much on the honor system when it comes to safety. That is why it is extremely important for Metro to have top-notch management. I think the safety problems we are seeing now at Metro are symptomatic of a larger problem, particularly on the rail system. Years of deferred maintenance and management problems are taking their toll. In February, some board members asked a well-respected former Metro General Manager, David Gunn, to conduct a review of the entire Metro operation. Mr. Gunn spent two weeks performing a broad review of the rail and bus system. He spoke to managers and line employees and rode the entire rail system. Unfortunately, Mr. Gunn is retired and living in Canada and couldn't be here today, but we were able to obtain a copy of the presentation he made to a closed door meeting of the Board of Directors last month. Mr. Gunn told the board that the bus system is in pretty good shape, but the rail system is in serious decline. According to Mr. Gunn, Metro Rail has major organization and managerial problems. For example, he found that there was so much bad blood between the maintenance and the engineering departments that they literally would not even speak to each other. That does not improve the safety conditions. Deferred maintenance has reached the crisis stage. Gunn said that in the two weeks he rode the rail system, there were two derailments, one of which he witnessed. He also found a broken rail on the main line. In addition, seven stations platforms, which are made of reinforced concrete, were being shored up by wood. Mr. Gunn concluded, and he told the board, that Metro Rail has d downhill momentum, which will be difficult to stop. At this time, I yield five minutes to the ranking member Congressman Issa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for holding this hearing. Clearly, we have jurisdiction over the District of Columbia and surrounding areas metro system on this committee. I'm proud that we have the ranking member of the Transportation Committee also on this committee, since the problem that we're going to explore today of our metro system in the D.C., Maryland, and Virginia area is, in fact, not unique. 
On a virtual daily basis around the country, people discover that the operators of trains are texting, reading, and sometimes sleeping while an extremely heavy piece of equipment hurdles down the road without any supervision. The use of automation today and over the last several decades has become the preferred system to rely on. But as we discovered last year, there is no substitute for human beings involved in the process, human beings involved in the maintenance, the engineering, and the operation. Any failure there cannot be made up for by a system that 99.9 percent of the time provides safety. The government, the U.S. government, provides 30 percent of the subsidy for every rail fare and as much as 70 percent of the subsidy for bus fares. Additionally, tens of thousands of federal workers receive a tax-free transit benefit that effectively amounts to an indirect subsidy to our metro system. Nevertheless, Metro cannot reach its financial obligations and is facing a $189 million budget shortfall for FY 2001. And let us be very clear, it's not because Washington, D.C. and Northern Virginia are not booming. Employment is up, home, home prices are virtually stable, and in fact, times are good in the District of Columbia. <clears throat> Fares are rising, but ridership is falling. A system which was, in, which was innovative in its day is now potentially going to be outdated. This shifts more and more traffic onto our roads, ones that in the case of the District of Columbia were not able to be expanded, cannot be upgraded because of the, I won't say clutter, but the large amount of federal buildings. We in the District of Columbia cannot simply tear down the White House in order to more, form a more uh, uh, innovative track system. We cannot move the capital. Due to this, the, uh, the failure of the red line and the killing of nine uh, people and the injuring of 80 others is more than just an accident to be investigated. We have a system in the District of Columbia and surrounding areas that must work. It must be able to carry more passengers and do so safe to, safely. So as we, as we hear today about the failures, let us understand that the day of, of saying that in the District of Columbia the metro is good to use is behind us. The metro is essential to use. We cannot, through buses or cars, meet the requirements of a growing federal government. I, for one, would like to see the federal government not grow, but I've been here 10 years and it was not having good freed up systems of transportation has never worked in the past. It will not work in the future. So I join with the chairman in wanting to investigate this and hope that we will continue to monitor on a broader uh, basis to find out where the flaws are coming in a system that we took to be safe when, in fact, it appears it is not safe and crumbling. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you very much. And let me just say that um, we have agreed that we would have two opening statements on each side. Uh, the ranking members of the subcommittee that has jurisdiction, we will allow them to make an opening statement, of course, and the gentlewoman from Washington, D.C., who actually represents uh, the District of D.C., and, of course, uh, Mr. Micah, who uh, is the ranking member on transportation. So we will go in that order with the gentlewoman from D.C. first. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and I certainly want to associate myself with uh, your remarks and with the remarks of the uh, ranking member. I asked for this hearing several months ago at the subcommittee level. Uh, I regret that it has been delayed, uh, but I will accept that delay in as much as it has been put at the full committee level on the hope that putting this hearing at the full committee level will get some greater attention to the issues that were raised now almost a year ago and where I see no progress. And if I may say so, Mr. Chairman, uh, you mentioned nine people from this region were killed just short of a year ago, seven of them from the District of Columbia, but, but the larger number of people who ride the metro come from all over the region. Where are we almost a year later? What action has been taken? Well, the President has appointed the two federal members that were necessary 
uh, to get the first $150 million of the $1.5 billion over 10 years we are promised. We got that $150 million only after nine people uh, were killed and finally during the appropriation uh, process. Out of committee and on, an, on another committee and the ranking member, Mr. Micah, of that committee is here. We have um, sent to the floor, not yet heard, a bill that will regulate metro systems across the country. But what has happened in this region, Mr. Chairman? Just this morning's paper, we read that the executives of the three jurisdictions involved just got together yesterday and, uh, and publicized the plan. I hope we will hear more of it to strengthen the so-called talk, the safety mechanism that was toothless and brainless uh, before this accident. A full year and we're just getting a mechanism and we're just learning about it. I don't know what it takes to shock uh, action, but I would have thought that immediately after nine people were sacrificed, that would be enough. In addition, after that, we see the metro trains slowed every day, which makes people think something must be wrong. No real explanation uh, as to what is happening and why and how long it will take. Mr. Chairman, I compare this one sterling system to the system you uh, know so well in New York, to systems in Chicago, those systems are very much older than the system here. And yet those systems do not show anything like this accident rate either among personnel or among it, its riders. Mr. Chairman, I am, if anything, frustrated have uh, nothing good to say about the progress that has been made despite the oversight of the subcommittee and believe that if we do not see some uh, uh, explanation at this hearing and some immediate action we, uh, on what has been a meltdown of our major uh, transit system, we will see what is already apparent, the loss of confidence in the only system most people have to take. Uh, so, so we're done with oversight. It is time now to demand from witnesses action that we can see, certainly by the anniversary of June 22nd, when nine people lost their lives on this system. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, gentlewoman from Washington, D.C. I now yield to uh, the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Micah. Well, thank you so much. Uh, uh, Mr. Towns, for uh, both uh, conducting this uh, hearing, your responsiveness and conducting appropriate oversight. Uh, I am the Republican ranking member, the Republican leader of the Transportation Committee. And I think it's great to have this committee with its independence also uh, take a look uh, where we need to and conduct oversight where we need to uh, on important issues, uh, even in the transportation realm. And certainly we have, uh, it's incumbent upon this uh, committee, given our jurisdiction also over the District of Columbia, uh, that we, um, we do uh, due diligence uh, in addressing the problems that we have here. Uh, first of all, let me say that safety has to be our absolute top priority when it comes to transportation. I think everybody's committed to it, the administration, members of Congress. Uh, uh, and. And I, I'm, I, I think we've got to see what we can do to make certain that we improve not only the district uh, transportation system operations, but also the, address the country's uh, uh, infrastructure and safe, uh, transportation safety issues there. Now, uh, given that, um, I, you know, every time you have problems with a system, everybody runs for a solution. I would have to beg to differ with the administration for the solution that they've come forward with. And I think we're presented with some choices. The administration's coming forward and say, we need to expand federal authority over, uh, uh, over local and state transit systems and operations. I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that the last person or, or entity that 
persons that we need or entity that we need or federal bureaucrats or another uh, federal uh, responsibility uh, in, in this area. If we just look at the transit responsibility we have for safety right now, transportation safety responsibility, where's our little chart? I put it up there. You look at the record, you have to go by the record of how people perform. Uh, the federal government, FRA, has authority over commuter rail right now and also over Amtrak, our two star uh, uh, areas that FRA oversees. The deaths uh, with the uh, commuter rail are one point, well, well, one per five billion passengers. Um, this is uh, the, the 2008 fatality rate. The uh, death um, uh, for Amtrak, uh, ex excluding suicides, is one for every 241,000. Uh, I guess that's t extrapolated out. But uh, by the same token, uh, if you look at uh, ra uh, rail transit, uh, under local and state authority, we're looking at one at uh, 65 uh, million. So uh, local and state, for the most part, are doing uh, very well, and they also have a huge number of passengers, far surpassing anything. Uh, in one day, the transit systems uh, uh, locally exceed uh, um, uh, what Amtrak does in an entire uh, year. So. We don't want to spread the butter any thinner as, and the money any thinner. What you need is um, you need resources and applying the resources for millions of dollars and, and more bureaucrats to walk the tracks or have some new uh, title is not the answer. It's also the slowest answer. You could ask Ms. Norton how, how she's coming on getting voting uh, rights for the District of Columbia. This is fe federal process is a slow process. Uh, I was pl pleased to see that um, the uh, two governors and Mayor Fenty uh, have acted, and I think that's the best action, and it can be taken. Not that we don't need to tighten up some federal uh, regulations. We don't need to impose mandates, but we can have some be better safety standards for them without the bureaucracy. What they need, and Ms. Norton put her finger on it, is money. <laughs> And the money didn't come until people were killed. And that's not the way to run a, a, a transit system. So we need to make the investment in technology and equipment that will give us the safest possible systems, not only in the District of Columbia, but across the United States of America. So glad you're conducting this. I want to keep our, our eye on the, the ball and the problem and a solution that, that it will make us uh, truly safe. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you for your statement. Uh, this time I yield to the chairman of the subcommittee that has jurisdiction, Congressman Lynch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for convening today's important hearing. As chairman of the subcommittee with jurisdiction over the District of Columbia, we've had uh, multiple hearings on the various challenges currently facing uh, the Washington Metro. The Washington Metropolitan Area Transit Authority, or WMATA, as some have referred to, is the nation's uh, primary, the national, excuse me, the national capital's primary transportation agency, and it provides services to a population of over 3.5 million people with a 1,500 uh, square mile area. Considering the estimated 40 percent of the federal employees who utilize the Washington Metro on a daily basis and the hundreds of thousands of D.C. area residents and tourists who rely on the system to navigate the nation's uh, capital, it is, a, it is critical that the D.C. Metro uh, system be transformed into a pinnacle of dependability and safety. Unfortunately, as others have pointed out, uh, the Washington Metro is currently facing serious safety and budgetary challenges. The D.C. Metro is confronting a $189 million budget gap, which concerns me as far as the potential impact to those who utilize Metro Rail, Metro Bus, and Metro Access. The Washington Metro is also in the midst of addressing a series of accidents, including the June 22, 2009 Red Line collision, which the subcommittee held a hearing on in July 2009, and five subsequent accidents, which resulted in four workers' deaths and three non-fatal injuries. At the subcommittee's hearing on the June 22 collision and in subsequent reports, serious questions were raised regarding deficiencies in the Washington Metro safety culture. In light of these concerns, I'm particularly interested in the steps that have been taken and that plan to be taken 
to ensure that the highest standards of safety exist for the Metro riders and employees alike. Specifically, I look forward to discussing the efforts that WMATA and the three jurisdictions that are affected have taken to strengthen Metro Washington Metro's State Safety Oversight Agency, the Tri-State Oversight Committee. I also hope we'll be able to touch upon the legislative proposals that have been put forth to enhance the oversight and regulatory authority of the Federal Transit Administration over transit agencies and operations. The Washington Metro Transit Authority is navigating a complex transition period right now, and I hope to learn more today about what is being done by Metro and its various stakeholders to ensure the safety and security of hundreds of thousands of people who rely on the system on a daily basis. Additionally, I'd like to note that the federal government has a role to play in promoting the safety and service of WMATA, and I welcome the opportunity to hear about what we in Congress can do uh, to help Metro at this time. Again, I'd like to thank uh, Chairman Towns and uh, the gentlelady from the District of Columbia, Ms. Eleanor Holmes Norton, for their uh, willingness to push this uh, issue forward and to convene this hearing today. I welcome our witnesses and I yield back the remainder of our time. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Lynch. The, ch the chairman uh, had to leave. Uh, we will continue the hearing. I want to thank the chairman and ranking member ISA also uh, for convening the hearing as a member of the uh, Washington area delegation. This has been a pressing issue for, for all of us. I want to thank the Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Dorton for her longtime uh, leadership on this issue. Uh, of course, Mr. Connolly uh, from Virginia uh, has been a big advocate for WMATA in his earlier capacity uh, as a local official, head of the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors, and of course has remained very focused on this issue as a member of Congress. Uh, and my colleagues uh, from Maryland and Virginia, Mr. Cummings, uh, as the, the Maryland, the District of Columbia, and the Virginia, of course, uh, contribute uh, to uh, both in terms of resources uh, and manpower and expertise uh, to this uh, important uh, system. I see Mr. Connolly, uh, I think we'll have an opportunity, I think, Mr. Connolly, uh, we're going to be very uh, flexible during the question period. I think that we'll have an, as many rounds as people uh, want uh, to cover points, but uh, I think with, without further ado, we'll just get right uh, to it. Uh, Mr. Rogoff, uh, thank you for uh, being here. Uh, today to give your testimony. Uh, as has been referenced, uh, you did an earlier uh, report. I believe this is the, f the first time that WMATA will have an opportunity in this kind of public setting uh, anyway to respond to your report. So thank you for being here today. It is the tradition of this uh, committee uh, to uh, swear in uh, the witnesses. Uh, so if you could please stand and raise your right hand as I administer the oath. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Let the record reflect that the witness is answered in the affirmative. Uh, you may now uh, be seated and please uh, proceed to deliver your uh, oral statement. Uh, you have five minutes. You'll see the yellow light go on there when you have one minute uh, left and the, the red light, uh, as it says, is, is when you can try and wrap up your uh, comments. Thank you for being here and please proceed. Well, thank you, Mr. Van Hollen, Ranking Member Micah, Ms. Norton, other members of the committee. I appreciate the opportunity to appear before you today. Uh, Washington Metro provides essential public transit and paratransit services to millions of citizens of the capital region every day. And through Secretary LaHood's leadership, the Obama administration has remained focused on the challenge of improving Metro's troubling safety record. In the wake of the tragic Fort Totten accident last June, Secretary LaHood, acting through his newly established Safety Council, provided technical assistance to the Metro leadership to help immediately address their safety deficiencies. And as, in addition, Secretary LaHood ordered the Federal Transit Administration, uh, along with uh, Senator Mikulski, to initiate an audit of the Tri-State Oversight Committee as well as Metro's safety program. Our audit resulted in 21 findings and recommendations uh, before I present them, however, I do want to make three overarching points. First, the individual findings in our audit are merely symptoms of a larger problem. Addressing each of our recommendations piecemeal one by one will not solve the whole safety problem at Metro. The overarching safety problem will only be solved through a top to bottom change in the safety culture and focus at Metro. Second, I want to emphasize that under current law, FTA does not have the legal authority to compel WMATA to take specific corrective action to address any of our recommendations. 
As I've testified before, FTA is currently prohibited by law from issuing national safety regulations for transit systems. And with few exceptions, state safety organizations like the TOC similarly have no legal authority to compel transit agencies like Washington Metro to respond to their safety findings. They don't have to respond to them in a timely way. In fact, they don't have to respond to them at all. This is precisely the reason why Secretary LaHood, on behalf of President Obama, formally transmitted a transit safety reform bill to the Congress back in December of 2009. Just weeks later, President Obama transmitted a budget request to Congress that includes the funding necessary to implement the bill. The Metro crash last summer certainly accelerated our efforts to develop our transit safety bill, but it's important to note that we were already focused on accidents and safety lapses that concerned us at the Chicago Transit Authority, the Muni system in San Francisco, the T up in Boston and elsewhere. While we believe the situation at Washington Metro is particularly troubling, some of the deficiencies and vulnerabilities that we identified in our audit, audit are similar to problems that exist at transit agencies and state safety organizations around the country. That is why we need Congress to move forward with our transit safety reform bill now. The US DOT cannot move forward to address these problems in any meaningful way while we are still prohibited in law from issuing safety regulations or conducting direct safety oversight. Just a few weeks ago, for example, Secretary LaHood used his authority to prohibit texting while driving nationwide for commercial truck and bus drivers. But even a simple common sense safety measure like that cannot automatically apply to employees operating trains on systems like Metro until Congress changes the law. So on behalf of the President and Secretary LaHood, I must ask you collectively to do all you can to move this legislation to the President's desk. The third overarching point I want to make, and, and, and it echoes something that, 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 that Mr. Micah said, and that is that transit, rail transit safety um, has challenges. We see important uh, factors on the horizon that cause us to concern. We have statistics that, that I'm sure uh, I will bring into the record that concern us that gave rise to our moving forward with our legislation. But it's important to point out that any proposal that uh, in the interest of, of, of curing the problems at Washington Metro lowers the capacity of Washington Metro and in so doing pushes people from Metro onto the city streets is a degradation of safety. It is still far safer by any measure to use rail transit than to drive. Uh, with those points made, I want to summarize uh, our 21 findings. Um, I, I, I'm going to summarize them in the interest of time. I think we, I'm going to ask that our full audit be made part of the hearing record uh, so all members will have access to it. But really, our findings summarize uh, surround four major observations, uh, both at the talk and in WMATA. First and foremost, inadequate communication. Also, in terms of uh, the authorities of the talk, inadequate authority, inadequate management of resources, and inadequate expertise. Re regarding WMATA, we believe there are serious organizational failures that must be addressed immediately. Our audit found that there is no internal process for commuting, communicating safety-related information across all WMATA departments. Worse still, there is no internal process for the chief safety officer to communi communicate safety priorities to the general manager. In fact, safety department representatives indicated that they were learning for the first time during our audit that information of a safety nature was being documented by other operating departments. Put simply, Metro Safety Department has been isolated both from top management and from other Metro departments. In fact, the Safety Department has had their access and authority questioned by other operating departments. The Safety Department was, in, in effect, completely marginalized at Metro, and this dynamic has seriously undermined the Safety Department's ability to conduct its safety responsibilities. Two facts that give us great concern, the Safety Department itself had been reorganized six times since 2005. Since 2007, there have been four different individuals in charge of the safety office. Given this record, no one should be surprised that Metro Safety Department has been dysfunctional and ineffective. Further, the lack of effective communication challenges within WMATA also impacts the communication between Metro and the Tri-State Oversight Authority. Uh, put simply, the multi-state agency that is charged with overseeing safety at Metro hasn't until recently had a way to communicate with Metro senior management. Finally, but importantly, WMATA must finalize its right-of-way protection rules and develop consistent and comprehensive training as part of implementing these rules before
before employees get access to the right-of-way. Supervisors and operators told FTA that communications from right-of-way workers do not specify their exact location on the alignment. Specifically, operators stated that in some cases they do not know if workers are on the track until they have visual contact. And when this occurs, especially in so-called blind spots, operators have limited ability to slow the train. This is a grotesque violation of all common sense safety principles.